Nobody's invited, but you lay there. I can do it so now, tell me what you like. We can do it both now, you should have enough. Cause tonight it's going down, yeah, you know it's coming down. We're in the zone now, don't stop. Ooh, oh. You can't take your hands off me. Touch me right, rock my body. I can't put your hands on you. Your body is my party. I'm the one that should have danced for you. You got me so excited. Now it's just me or you. Your body's my party. Let's get excited. Oh. Boy, you should know that your love, it's always on my mind. And I'm gonna fight it. I won't all the time. Boy, you should know that your love, it's always on my mind. And I'm gonna fight it. Things I want to do to you. Our body's calling you. So I just started singing first because singing is something that if I do in public, I get very nervous before. And I think that's the only <coughs> way that I could <coughs> live up to the title of my performance is to do something in the beginning that uh, makes me feel very exposed and awkward. So I'm like, okay. And now uh, you can ask questions. <laughs> What's the last thing you did that <laughs> you mean in the last 48 hours? The last time it happened. You know, I think it was, um, there was a situation that happened yesterday at 6 in the morning, where, where I think it was actually the way that I had my feelings put on the place, and I wasn't very clear with the people, so I expressed myself in a confused way, I was also in a confused manner, so I felt ashamed by doing that, because I felt like, you know, I'm not someone that gets ashamed, you know, if they're, like, they piss their pants, or if they have, like, a squid mark, like, you know, those things are normal, but I think that... Not being clear, sometimes it's something that I feel very ashamed of. Like right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was clear enough. <laughs> What's the sound of guilt to you? What is the sound of guilt to me? It's like... I, for me, it's, a, it's not really a sound. Like, it feels more, you know, sound of the guilt. <coughs> no, for me, the guilt feels more like texture, more like weight. Can I give it a sound? I guess, I guess it would be the <laughs> doom. <laughs> because, because you know that's exactly how it feels. Like, your heart just gets kind of twisted and then it becomes like very hard stone and then it really falls like and... Bah. That's how I feel guilt. Like, I, I know that all the... I might not show it, you know, that I feel guilty, but... I 
felt guilty for things that I've done in my life. What made you choose the song that you opened with? <laughs> because this is from, from a... Does anyone know who it is from? It's from Sierra. <laughs> <laughs> and I like her very much because she, these lyrics, they are so inviting. You know, like, my body is your body. Nobody else is invited but you, baby. <laughs> you know? it, it creates a climate very easily. <laughs> And it, it also puts me on the mood when I hear it. <laughs> if you will be an insect, which insect? <laughs> I guess I'll be a leech. Because, you know, that's something I... You know, if we human beings would be insects, we'd be leeches because we're just leeching it out of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so in a very realistic way, I would be a, maybe a blood sucker. <laughs> yeah. What animal would best describe your sex life? <laughs> I would have to say that it would be a seahorse. <laughs> People know yeah. what happens. Can someone say the men get pregnant? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's even more complicated than that. You know, it's it's part of the nature, the male nature of the seahorses, that the ultimate gesture of masculinity <coughs> is its own exemption its own obliteration. What question were you hoping to answer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I wouldn't know. Like, how could I know? I don't know many. I don't know. I know three of you. <laughs> Well, then what, what do you I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't, really. I don't know. Do you think by what you've... S do you think that I would expect some questions? That I would prepare, right? And that I would, you know, think... Okay, these people from this certain demography from Berlin that have like somehow a certain thing together, like a cultural identity, they have some certain issues which are on the news, which are supposedly to be important, and then there's these things that we should talk about, maybe like as practitioner, practitioners of contemporary art, but I didn't do that. <laughs> I did something else. <laughs> What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm doing it what I did. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. And this is what you are doing. I didn't ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I can answer other things as well. <laughs> Because I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like in this way, I can be more whole in the answers which I give because I'm not only <coughs> answering them with my mind, but I'm actually also letting the thoughts go through the body, which then makes the answer come from another place sometimes. Like, 
I'm mostly just tricking myself. I think we all trick ourselves a lot. You know, trick, we trick ourselves into situations, uh, jobs, lives, <laughs> things, coming to places, thinking we're going to have a good time, expecting things. What's the first memory that comes to your mind when you think of you being 10 years old? The first memory? That comes? That comes from singing. No, when you think of yourself being 10 years old. Ah, myself being 10 years old. Uh, when I was 10 years old, I remember instantly of going to fifth grade. Which, for in from where I'm from in Portugal, it's a big deal because you like <laughs> elementary school is this kind of joyful thing where you, you know, casually learn how to read and count and then you go to the fifth grade and it's like a big deal and I remember that all my friends that were with me in the previous school they had like other time schedules than me in school and then I was there always by myself and I didn't have the friends and I remember that that was making me feel very anxious about going to school yeah what do you have in your basement? <laughs> I don't have a basement. <laughs> and if you will have one, what will be put there? <laughs> I would probably keep a lot of trash. <laughs> like? Just like things that you find in the streets and you're like, oh, that's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have this kind of things, yeah. <laughs> What would you have? What I do have or what I will have? <laughs> <laughs> what do you have? <laughs> Things that I find on the street and I think that they're pretty and nice and maybe one day I will use. <laughs> oh my god. I wonder if people think that we actually rehearsed this so that we could like actually have the same thing. Maybe we can have a basement together. <laughs> so maybe I don't have to ask for the next... <laughs> I don't know if a basement is really what is important <laughs> for my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is important for your life right now? I think that better than asking myself what is important in my life is to that everything, every little thing that I do becomes important. So then it doesn't mean I would like to, you know, maybe I would like to show this performance in a place where they would pay me and <laughs> have a residency. And, but, So then I wouldn't be doing this with you right now, you know? Maybe this is just things that I say to myself to be happy with the situation that I am. Like these lies that we tell each other, and ourselves. What to you is the essence of human interaction? The essence of human interaction is... <laughs> It's very simple, actually. It's uh, you know, if you are, for example, if you touch someone from your right side and your left side and your feet as well, like for example, the three of you, if you lie down <coughs> with your eyes closed and breathing together, after 10, 15 minutes, you would stop somehow feeling the difference where your body finished and where her body started. So I think that the principle of human interaction is attraction. Do you think that is something missing between the virtual world and the real world? Yes, it's a matter of... It's a matter of availability. Digital is always there for you. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> but in the in the analog world, where there's body, matter, weight, it's there, but not always you can access everything. Sometimes things come to you. Like, I have all the memories of when I was 10 years old here somewhere, but I needed you to make me think about that moment. <coughs> so, we need to be attracted to each other to access this database. You're driving from the people. No. Can you do it now? I probably could, but it wouldn't be real. I I don't know. I I really would like to, you know, cry in front of people, but if I would feel in this moment that I was really crying for something that I couldn't control. I could, I, I, I could even try to cry right now, but it won't be real. Do you think this is the real you? I think... I think that real is a feeling. You know? But it's your feeling. <coughs> is the other one's feeling. What is reality? Is your reality or is the other one's reality? <laughs> 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 what do you think? Uh, <laughs> this, uh, this <laughs> <laughs> what do you feel uh, that it is that gets lost if we don't allow ourselves to be vulnerable? Well, if you don't allow yourselves to be vulnerable, you'll be strong all the time, but you won't be strong all the time because you'll crack. You will also crack if you're vulnerable, but if you're vulnerable, you're honest about it, and you might be surprised. You might be surprised because we only we th we associate vulnerability with failure because we never none of us have any weak image to look up to. No, our parents they're like strong, the movie stars they're beautiful, uh, the politics they're honest and kind in it. <laughs> and any person that you know wasn't living up to this ridiculous utopic uh, standards isn't isn't worthy of our memory we have to look for it the biggest influence in my life was most probably my great grandmother, and for the most part, she was she lived until she was 103. Like she was the real deal. <laughs> she was drinking, she was smoking. By the time where if you had a cold, they would prescribe prescribing some lucky strikes. <laughs> and this woman, I met, when I was like one, she already had Alzheimer. And then I remember when I was like four or five, she was already crazy, regular crazy. She would say stuff to my grandfather in the middle of the dinner like, I don't know how you impregnated my daughter with that small cock of yours. <laughs> she never made any sense. She, they, they tried to put her in, in like a, a senior's house and she would escape, you know. <laughs> she knew her way around, but then in the middle she would forget where she was. She couldn't have that, this access. And, and until the moment where she was too fucked up to function and to walk and stuff, she was having fun. She was having fun. She was, she probably was like, like most of women born in 19... 
18 in Portugal, she probably, her husband probably beat her up like crazy, my great-grandfather, and, you know, that's her revenge. <laughs> she was in the moment that she exudes vulnerability, so she became so strong, you know? Because what, are you going to hit an old woman that, that says your dick is small? No, <laughs> you're not going to be like, what the I fuck are you know. saying? No, you're going to be like, oh, okay. <laughs> Where's your guardian? But she doesn't sound like the type of woman who would embrace in front But she didn't have a choice anymore. You're going to die. Just like her, maybe not as old as her, maybe a little bit older than her. You'll get to that point of vulnerability. Why don't you just get it now? for one last question. When will you stop? <laughs> I'll stop now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.